All right, well, we're back for our spoiler discussion of The Visit, and if you saw our review, um, we thought it was a movie worth seeing. Not necessarily the greatest uh, movie that we've ever seen or anything like that, but definitely a step in the right direction for Shyamalan. Um, I'm going to say it again. If you have any desire to see this movie, don't let us talk to you about spoilers. Don't let us ruin the movie for you or tell you what the twists are. It's worth going and checking out for yourself. Um, having said that, um, the first two-thirds or so of the movie it does a really good job of making it about are the grandparents crazy or not. There's this great misdirection, which is you're trying to figure out if the grandparents are insane or monsters or and how, they just have how things do people that go, so unstable have a counseling job? Right. Which makes perfect sense towards the end. And and then the twist becomes that they're not the real grandparents. They're not even the grandparents. They're from they're actual the asylum psych- place. Yeah, they're, they're actually psychiatric at. patients. Yeah. They know their diagnoses mm-hmm. and they tell the kids the diagnoses to try and calm them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, you're your grandmother has, you know, sundowner syndrome and this is what happens. And they look it up and it's like, yeah, that's what happens. And, you know, your grandfather's incontinent and he's real mm-hmm. nervous about it. And sometimes he gets confused and thinks he's going to a costume party. And, yeah. But, you know, I'm I'm wondering if later in the movie, if M. Night was like, people are picking up on it too early, maybe in like test viewings or something, but he threw some things in there that are typically M. Night-esque, like the idea of aliens. And, and it was the alien just, thing, a werewolf thing? Yeah, that just was like weird a weird supernatural twist. Yeah, and it's none of that. It's well, the grandparents of... believed in the aliens. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was legitimately part of their... Yeah. Part of their agenda was to send them to where the aliens hmm. were going. Um, the only thing, and I... I realize that this this probably has to do with how I I really applaud how well the found footage was done in this, how well the documentary was established and the rules followed for all of that stuff. The only shot that kind of bothered me was when they showed Carol hanging. Like, there's that brief shot where they're just about to oh, walk she opens out the, the door, door and she's hanging on the she's tree. She's hanging yeah. from a tree and they close the door again and, like, send them back in. And this is like, Carol. this is like when they know that they're they, they already dangerous. know that they're dangerous. Yeah. They're actually trying to get out of the house mm-hmm. and they see that and they come back in. And my problem with that was that it seemed like a really strange thing for them to do to hang her from a tree to kill her. When the other people were like secretively la- later, of. we found out that they were killed with a hammer. Mm-hmm. But like, she wasn't sent down the well. Like, mm-hmm. it seems like they're going to try and send the kids down the well. Yeah. Um, it's just like they needed to tie up this loose end, but they also needed it to be kind of in the background enough that you didn't uh-huh. that the kids didn't just openly question it um, in front of them. So. Like, I get why it was where it was. It's just... It just seemed inconsistent to me. Mm -hmm. That's my only... It's a little out of place. Yeah. Like, why would they... Like, did they actually... I think it was more for a made for the shot. Did they actually restrain her and hang her? And then climb up and... Yeah. Like, between the two of them? Like, how the hell did they do that? Or did they kill her and then they hung her? It felt more like one of those things that was storyboarded and that would be a cool reveal for, you know... That that's that's that was my take on it too, and that's why it felt it felt inconsistent mm-hmm. to me, mm-hmm. um, just for what the, those characters would do. Other than that, like I thought everything was really. It is kind of cool looking back over the film and thinking about all those little moments, and it's like, oh, now how they they all line up now. Yeah, you know, that's cool. Which is why it's been well thought out. Like that's that's what's so great about the Sixth Sense is that. It's a movie that you need to watch twice. Yeah. Because once totally. the twist is revealed, you have to go back and see everything again. Yeah. And this movie, I found myself watching and saying, 
I'm not invested in this enough to want to watch it again. Like, I wouldn't run back and see this a second time. I don't think I'd necessarily even, like, watch it again. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I didn't like it that much. Um, but I can see where, you know, there would be... There's, there's breadcrumbs that lead to what happens in the ending. Mm -hmm. um, it's just sort of... I don't know. There were scenes that just just felt really um, like them just goofing around in front of the camera and stuff that I don't really need to sit through again. Like, yeah, just the kids like kinda... raps were funny, but like I don't. You know, the way it ended. Like I know he was trying to go for more of the uh, you know the kind of the meaning and the forgiveness thing and the, the close family connection thing, which I didn't feel kind of like in the sixth sense. That felt real emotionally. This felt a little tacked on, but uh, the way they did it made me still think there was yet another twist that never came. Did you guys feel that way? I was well, there, for another twist. There was another twist. It was that Catherine Hahn was the one that... Didn't. That... She kept, shunned them. She shunned them. It yeah. wasn't the other way around. Yeah. Um, and the that leading into her telling her daughter not to hang on to anger and then they yeah. were showing the With father the at the end. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really well done, actually, and, and well set up, because you see the daughter trying to convince the grandmother to talk about well, what happened. Did you notice in the very, very last scene, she's actually in front of the mirror, yeah. brushing her mm -hmm. hair? I guess Put it was kind of obvious. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. cool. Well, she also used the mirror to kill the Oh, grandmother. that's right. Yeah, she, so she awesome. faced herself. Yeah. That, uh, that that's pretty good. That's scene, pretty good. Like, they... That very slow, she'd pan back and, and the grandma would be there, and they'd come back and the grandma would be there. It wasn't like your typical, ah, here she is. Mm. Yeah. It was just there, and there was no music. It, it, it just allowed the, the audience to feel uncomfortable. Right. And it was... It was amazing. That, that, to me, was probably my favorite part of the Right, movie. and both of the kids were strong characters yeah, they, they were, were good actors but they were also like not screaming and crying at everything that happened mm -hmm. you know i mean that's how this kind of movie so would in the short so I, you know that's something i didn't get as i was watching it was in a short space of time she looked in the the window and i i was just taking it for the moment in the room but that was her facing herself for the first time in a long time mm -hmm. that 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 happened she had that kind of thing and then the kid un, unfroze himself like it did in the football game from way back. Yeah. Like that all happened and he was in a yelling space all of time. Of the, right. He was yelling all of the like football stuff. Yeah. Like yeah, it all it's it's really tied well together so symbolically. To that, yeah. Um leading to them, you know, having a closer relationship with their mother and their mm -hmm. father and not, you know, pushing him out quite so much. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I mean it it's it's good. It's not great. It's not the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a movie I need to really see again. Um, but it wasn't bad. But it wasn't bad. Yeah. It really wasn't. Um, if somebody asked me, like, should they go see this, I'd definitely tell Yeah, I would send I somebody to it. Um, I mean, especially if you're, you know, dying for a good suspense movie, a good psychological thriller kind of movie because you don't get very many of those. You get Sinister 2. And what was the rating on that? Was that a PG-13 or was that an R? I I, I believe it was an R but uh, I, I don't remember for sure. I'd be shocked at well, I guess for the mild nudity? Um, but I... It was a PG-13. PG-13. I, huh. I, I did like what you pointed out the the almost Kubrick send up about the just basing it days out of the week you know Monday phew, right mm -hmm. and, and the fact that he he let scenes linger a little longer than maybe they should uh, just to just to build a little maybe bit that more kind of feel slight of uneasiness. uneasiness yeah yeah and it also feels like raw footage that way. Yeah. Which is another, like, using the rule of this is something that was actually shot on a camera. Like, it's not... Obviously, it's edited. 
right? But it's not necessarily like scene edited into a narrative. It's more mm-hmm. this scene is part of the movie, so we just show all of it. Yeah. And maybe it goes off into nowhere. Yeah, it's intentionally not smooth in that way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah, it was good. If you like the way we do these, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com, and thanks for watching.